Imagine savoring a glass of your favorite vintage while gazing out at the cosmos. Today, we're embarking on an extraordinary journey that transcends earthly pleasures, blending the worlds of fine wine and the final frontier. Buckle up, because we're about to uncover the fascinating saga of wine's adventures in space. But first, let's get into that intro. Welcome to Beats and Wine Stories. My name is Steve, and I'm your host through this vast world of wine and the music that dances along with it. Join us as we journey through the sensory experiences that define cultures, awaken the palate, and stir the heart. So grab your favorite glass and let the journey begin. This is Beats and Wine Stories. It all started in 1969 when a small vial of wine boldly went where no beverage had gone before, the moon. Buzz Aldrin, a devout man, held a private communion ceremony on the lunar surface, complete with a small wafer and a bit of fermented grape juice. This was the first time wine had graced the surface of another celestial body, but this wasn't the last time someone tried to send wine among the stars. Fast forward to the 1970s when NASA was on a mission to make spaceflight more comfortable for its astronauts. One of their best ideas was improving the quality of space food. Gone were the days of dried, inedible powders. Instead, they introduced frozen foods, wet-packed meals, and perishables. Astronauts could soon enjoy delicacies like spaghetti and prime rib, and maybe even a little alcohol. That's where Charles Barolin comes in. The men tasked with choosing the perfect wine for the Apollo program. His mission was to find a wine that not only tasted good, but could also withstand the rigors of space travel. Traditional, heavy, clunky bottles were out of the question. Bauerlin needed something that wouldn't lose its flavor after being repackaged. After collaborating with researchers at the University of California, he landed on the perfect choice, sherry. Sherry is a fortified wine that's heated during processing, which stabilizes it and ensures it maintains its flavor after leaving the bottle. The sherry was then poured into special plastic bags with built-in straws. Astronauts could simply squeeze the pouch and enjoy a nice sip of wine. It seemed like the perfect solution. But then, things took an unexpected turn. When the public caught wind of NASA's plan, Teetotalers across the nation rose up in righteous anger. Now, a teetotaler is a person that totally abstains from any alcohol. They pressured NASA to scrap the sherry experiment, arguing that alcohol had no place in space. Additionally, it turned out that wine released an unpleasant odor in zero gravity, which didn't help matters. Adding unnecessary nausea to the astronauts' challenges seemed unwise. That led to the Sherry experiment being officially shelved. But the story doesn't end here. The wine found a new purpose in the Skylab Medical Experiment Altitude Test Program, or SMEET for short. This involved a group of astronauts being locked inside a vacuum chamber for 56 days. While the Sherry didn't make it to outer space, it certainly made those 56 days a bit more enjoyable for the astronauts. So as you savor your next glass of wine, think of the ingenuity and boldness it takes to blend the familiar comforts of Earth with the boundless possibilities of space. Here's to the dreamers who dare to take their passions beyond our world, reminding us that no matter where we are, a touch of home is always within reach. Once again, thank you for joining and listening in. For the music of Beats and Wine, visit beatsandwine.com forward slash music. I appreciate you so much. And until next time, cheers to your exceptional self.